Nested if allows you to test multiple conditions by using two or more if functions in a single formula. So today we'll create simple nested if formulas and compare it to if, switch and choose functions. Sometimes VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH and XLOOKUP can also be used instead of nested if. However, I won't cover those in this video. So let's solve two examples and if you have any questions, please leave me a note below. Thank you. The if function is one of the most popular functions in Excel. It allows you to test if a condition is met and returns a value if it is true and another value if the condition is false. When you need to test two or more conditions, then you have to nest multiple if functions in a single formula. In this example, there are three options. If option one is selected, the result should be 15%. Option 2 should be 25% and 3 is 35%. So let's write the formula in the order of the options. If the option selected in C8 is equal to option 1, that's the first test. If true, the result should be 15%. If false, then we insert another if function to test the next condition. If the option selected in C8 is equal to option 2, this is the second test. If true, the result should be 25%. If false, then we insert another if function to test the next condition. If the option selected in C8 is equal to option 3, this is the third test. If true, the result should be 35%. If false, return zero. Close the brackets for all three if functions and enter. So let's test by changing the values. Cool. Now let's see how the ifs function tests multiple conditions. The ifs function allows you to test multiple conditions in a single formula and returns a value corresponding to the first true condition that is met. So let's write the formula in the order of the options. If the logical test is the value to be evaluated. So check if C8 is equal to 1. If true, return 15%. That's the first test. So what happens is that Excel will evaluate the first test. If it's true, Excel will return 15% and won't test the other conditions. If it's false, Excel will test the next condition. So check if C8 is equal to 2 and return 25% if true. If it's false, Excel will test the next one. Check if C8 is equal to 3 and return 35%. If it's false, then we have to give Excel a true condition to evaluate because it only returns a value based on a true condition. So for the final logical test, insert true and return zero. Now to summarize, if this is false, this is tested. If false, this is tested. If false, it gets a true here and returns a zero. If is easier and shorter compared to the nested if formula. Now let's see how the switch function tests multiple conditions. Just like ifs, the switch function allows you to test more than one condition in a single formula. It compares one value against a list of values and returns a result that corresponds to the first match. So switch, the expression is the value to be tested. Value 1 is option 1 in B4. So this is saying compare the option in C8 to option 1. If true, return 15%. Next is value 2 or default value. This works like the if false argument in the if function. And it's one advantage switches over the ifs function. It allows a default value if no match is found. I'll show you how it works shortly. So value 2 is option 2 in B5, return 25%. Value 3 is option 3, return 35%. If no match is found, then you can insert anything you want returned as a default value. That will be 0 here. Close the bracket and enter. Easy peasy. 
Let's look at the choose function. The choose function returns a value based on a specified position. This is an old but simple function and it's available in all Excel versions. So choose index number is the position of the value. The options are arranged in ascending order. So this is pretty easy. Value one is the first option, 15%. Value two is 25%. Value three is 35%. If no match is found, it will return a value error. And to work around that, you can wrap the choose function in an if error function. So if error, it should return zero. So we should get the same answer for all functions when a selection is made. Let's move on to the second example. The range of application dates and their corresponding status are listed here. Applications submitted between August 1 and August 31 are under review. Those between September 1 and September 30 are processing and those from October 1 are on hold. So to write this in a formula, you would say dates greater than or equal to August 1 are under review. Dates greater than or equal to September 1 are processing and dates greater than or equal to October 1 are on hold. Any date outside this range is ineligible and that will be dates before August 1. All right, let's write the nested if statement. Remember, logical tests are evaluated in the order they appear in the formula. So once a condition is true, the following conditions are not tested. So you have to start from the latest date, otherwise the results will be wrong. So if the date in C8 is greater than or equal to October 1, which is the latest date, that's the first test. If true, the application is on hold. If false, then you test the next date. If C8 is greater than or equal to September 1, the application is processing. If false, you test the last condition. If C8 is greater than or equal to August 1, the application is under review. If false, the application is ineligible. Close the brackets for all three if functions. Now to make the formula clearer, you can move each function to a new line by pressing Alt and Enter. And you can expand the formula bar as well so you can view everything. So let's check if it works. Cool. Let's see the ifs function. Ifs, logical test. If C8 is greater than or equal to October 1, value if true is hold. If false, Excel will test the next condition. If C8 is greater than or equal to September 1, the application is processing. If false, the next condition is tested. If C8 is greater than or equal to August 1, the application is under review. If false, then insert true here, just like we learned earlier, because Excel only returns a value based on a true condition and return ineligible. So if all three conditions are false, it gets a true here and returns ineligible. Let's see the switch function. Switch compares one value, which is the expression, against a list of values and returns the results that corresponds to the first match found. You can include logical operators like greater than or less than in the expression. However, like ifs, you can insert true as the expression, such that the expression is compared with a list of values and returns the result that corresponds to the first true it finds. So switch. The expression is true. Value one is C8 is greater than or equal to October one. If true, the result is hold. If false, Excel would test the next condition. If C8 is greater than or equal to September one, the result is processing. If false, the next condition is tested. If C8 is greater than or equal to August one, the application is under review. Now, if no match is found, then insert ineligible as the default value. 
close the bracket and enter. Cool. Let's look at the choose function. The choose function returns a value based on its position. The index number is the position of the value you want returned. Now watch this closely. To use logical operators for the choose function, you have to evaluate all the conditions and add up the results. In Excel, true is equal to one and false is equal to zero. So true plus true is two, all right? You can use this logic to calculate the position of the value to be returned. So choose, for index number, we're going to evaluate all the conditions from the first position and add up the result. C8 is greater than or equal to August 1. C8 is greater than or equal to September 1. C8 is greater than or equal to October 1. Value 1 is review. Value 2 is processing. Value 3 is old. If no match is found, choose will return a value error. So you can wrap it in an if error function to return ineligible. Close the bracket and enter. Now, if I change the date, we should get the same answer for all functions. Cool. And we should get ineligible for any date before August. Great. To wrap this up, ifs, switch, and choose are great alternatives to nested ifs. However, my favorite is the ifs function because it is simple and straightforward. That's all for today. Please subscribe to support this channel and hit the like button. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.